In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, minimum and maximum values of a quadratic function. And uh, I'm going to show a, a fairly standard way to find what the minimum value is or the maximum value is. There are, there are more than one way to do that. There is, I should say, there is more than one way. Uh, we're going to take a look at the completing the square method in, in this tutorial. And so uh, minimum values, maximum values look like this. Graphically, if you have a parabola that opens upward, then there's some lowest point, and that's the uh, where the minimum value occurs. The minimum value is actually just the function value or the y-coordinate. It's not actually the ordered pair. Uh, over here, this parabola opens downward, so the vertex is right here. The, it would have a maximum value because it has the highest possible value, and the uh, the function value at that place is the maximum value. Uh, if these units were one, then the maximum value would be negative four, and the x value it occurs for we would look up to the x-axis and see what that value would be there. So minimum values happen now in standard form, vertex form doesn't matter. It's really the a value by looking at the equation you can tell whether there's a min or max. If the a value, the stretch factor, is a positive value, it opens up and there's a minimum value. If the uh, there's a maximum, if the a value is less than zero, because then it opens down and there's a highest point. So when the equation is given in standard form, uh, we can uh, complete the square to rearrange it into this so we can tell where the vertex is. Uh, the vertex is where that min or max occurs. And the vertex of this would be p comma q. Now remember, it's this sign here, it, it, the formula is actually x minus p, so it's actually the vertex of this, yeah, I'm trying to write here, there we go, so the vertex is at p comma q, not negative pq, so uh, remember, um, this is the x square of the vertex so and it's it's always an x minus so for example if i have let's say i have the uh let's say we had three x minus two squared plus eight for example then the vertex is at two comma eight it's not at negative two eight okay because the formula has an x minus in here not an x plus so, for example, if we had another one, let's say we had uh, negative 5. It really doesn't matter what the stretch factor is, where the vertex is. So let's say this was x plus 1 squared uh, plus 7 or something like that. So the vertex for this one would be at negative 1, 7. To see the actual p value here, like we would actually write that as x minus negative one in the brackets here. Okay, so I wrote it as x minus like up here. So there, that's why negative one is the x coordinate. So we'll take a look at a few of those in the examples in the next two pages. So in example one here on this page, where um, this is just a standard, it's more of an application on the uh, the, the following page. It says uh, take this and and write it in the uh, in vertex form. And then after we do that, we're going to graph it. So let's take the uh, function and write it down. Uh, y equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 14. And in completing the square, the first thing you do is factor this a value out of the terms that have x's. Uh, while it might actually factor, it does, does factor the 14, uh, you don't need to factor the 14. In fact, you shouldn't actually when you're completing the square. That'll actually, there's a way to do that, but it actually complicates things. So don't factor it out of the constant in the end if there's a constant, just the terms that have x's. So if we factor it out of the uh, a 2, out of a 2x squared, we would x squared here. Remember when you're factoring, what you're actually doing is dividing out the common factor. So if we divide that out by 2, that gives the x squared. If we divide the 2 out of the 12x, that gives the 6x here. So that's how I get the x squared plus 6x. Uh, plus 14. Now, um, I normally, when I write this line out, I normally leave a space here because this is the completing the square part. So I don't normally write it out like this. I'll leave a, a space after the 6x. So the only difference between this line and this line is I have a space after the 6x. Because I'm going to add a number here so that the first three terms here are going to be a perfect square trinomial when I factor. And the way you find that number is this. You take the 6 from the 6x and you divide it by 2 
And the reason it's 2 is because you're factoring into a perfect square, two terms, two binomials, and we square that. So 6 divided by 2 is 3 that we're squaring, which of course gives you 9. So 9 is the number that we will add and subtract here. We'll add 9, subtract 9. Now we can't just put a plus 9. We only actually need the plus 9 to make the perfect square, but in order to keep the equation to have the same total value, uh, you have to also subtract 9, because if you add 9 to something and subtract 9, then you've actually added nothing and it has the same value. It's kind of like giving somebody $9 and taking away $9, well, then they end up with the same amount. Now, this, these first three terms, that's a perfect square trinomial. So this negative 9 here, it's going to come out. We're going to bring it out of the brackets. And when it comes out, now a lot of people just say, well, change the sign. It doesn't always change sign. It gets multiplied by this value. So if that happened to be a negative, it would change sign. But it, it does not in this case. So we're going to multiply that by the 2. And so when we do that, this is what the next line looks like. So we have our 2 in front here. These three terms are still in here. And the, we have the 14. Now, negative 9 times 2 would be minus 18. So that's what that becomes on the end here. And we'll just combine that with a 14 in a moment. So 14 minus 18 is negative 4. Well, what goes in here? This is going to be a perfect square, and we're really just factoring this. So since there's an x squared here, then you see, well, you think, what do you square to make x squared? See, this has to be an x. So we'll put an x here. Whatever sign is there has to be between the x and the number. Okay, so if it's a plus here, it has to be a plus. If it's a minus, it would be minus. And a couple ways you can find this number in the end. Uh, number one, it's the number that we squared here. Okay, so that's one way. So it's a 3. It's, that number is also the square root of 9. And the problem with doing the square root of 9 is you have to make sure you check to make sure you have the sign right. So same sign as this. The last way is this number is always half of this coefficient because we did, remember we did the half here a moment ago. And the nice thing about doing the half here is you get the right sign. So if that was a minus 6x, then I'd put a minus 3 here. It's plus 6x, so I'd put a plus 3 here. So that's vertex form, and the vertex would be negative 3, negative 4. Remember x minus p? So if it's x plus 3, it's actually x take away negative 3. That's why negative 3 is the x-coordinate. And so let's, uh, and I'm going to use the step pattern to graph this. And if you haven't seen the step pattern before, I'll show you how that works. So let's plot the point negative 3, negative 4. So negative 3, negative 4 is right there. That's the vertex. Uh, the 2, the a value is positive, so we know it opens up. Now this is how the step pattern works. If it's a normal parabola, then we go over 1 and up 1 on each side. And so, so the step pattern means that we would um, go up 1 and then 3 and then 5. And so this would only be if the a value is one. So if my vert, if there was if there was a one here, then there's my vertex. So I would go up over one and up one on either side. And then from there I would go up three. So after that place we were one and up three. And the same on this side. And then we would go up one, two, three, four, five. And the same on this side over one and up five. And we could draw a parabola. You see the parabola forming. Now this, since the a value is a 2, it means it's steeper. So we take all these 1, 3, and 5, and instead of going up 1, 3, and 5, we multiply them by 2. So the step pattern is it goes up by 2 in each side. And I guess I really should write that step pattern here. So the 1, 3, 5 is 2, 6, 10. So there's the 2 that we just went up. So next we're going to go up 6. So from here we'll go over, over 1 and then count up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the uh, the same on this side. Uh, and then we could go up 10, um, 1, I guess I could, I could have actually done that. 1, 2, 3, actually let's get rid of these uh, writing here. And so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I'm almost up to the top of my graph here. And I could do the same over here. And then we could draw a parabola. I didn't have those two points plotted, so uh, you see it going towards those, but we're not 
quite there. So that's how you uh, um, put a, a standard form equation in vertex form and then how you can use the step pattern. Now, step pattern is not the only way. It's, I like it because it's a fairly quick way to graph the parabola and accurate too. Uh, you can make a table of values and use transformations, but that is kind of time consuming. In example number two, the last one here, we have this rock that's thrown up from the top of a building and then falls to the ground. The height of the rock in h's and meters after t seconds, t is the time in seconds, is given by this equation. Uh, h equals negative 5t squared plus 15t plus 20. So three questions. First of all, we're asked to determine the maximum height of the rock. And the maximum height of the rock will occur where the vertex is. So we, well, we want to find the vertex, just like in example one. So let's start with our uh, function here. And uh, if I'm going to complete the square to find the vertex, the first thing I would do is factor that negative 5 out of the terms that have t's. Not the 20, even though it does factor to 20. Uh, now remember I'm saying the terms with t's don't say the t terms, because technically that's a t term, but this is a t squared term. Okay, so just being technical a little bit. So we factor a negative 5 out of those uh, terms. And so negative 5 t squared divided by negative 5 is t squared. 15t divided by negative 5 is negative 3t. And so now uh, next, uh, I'll leave my space here, just like I referred to in the uh, first example. So I want to find out what I add and subtract here to make the perfect square. So we take this negative 3, and we divide it by 2, and then you square it. And so negative 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. And I'm going to keep this in fractions because this is a university stream functions course. Um, for final answers here, when it says, what's the maximum height of the rock? You're going to answer probably in a decimal, not in a fraction. Because if, if somebody, actually I'll refer to that at the end. We'll, we'll forget about that for the moment. So 9 quarters is what we're going to add and subtract here. And I only actually need this 9 quarters, remember, to, to make the perfect square. This is a perfect square trinomial. So this negative 9 quarters here is going to come out. We're going to move it out. And remember, it gets multiplied by this negative 5 here. So we're going to multiply that by negative 5. And so, so what does that work out to be? Notice I haven't put that on the end because I just have the 20 here. So if we multiply, uh, let's see here. Uh, we'll do it right here negative 9 quarters, I'll leave in brackets here, times negative 5. Now negative 5 is the same as negative 5 over 1. Negative 5 times negative 9 is 45. Two negatives multiply to a positive, and in, in the denominator 1 times 4 is 4. So it's 45 quarters we're going to be adding on the end here. So um, well, what does that add to? We've got to add 20 and 45 quarters. So let's take our uh, 45 quarters here. And so 45 quarters plus that 20. Now 20 is the same as 20 over 1. So to get a common denominator, I have a 1 here and a 4 here. Common denominator would denominator would be 4. So we multiply that by 4 top and bottom. So this is 45 quarters on the left side here. Plus, now 20 times 4 would be 80. So this is 80 quarters, which adds up to 125 quarters. So that's what's going to be here. That's actually the y coordinate, or in this case, h coordinate, I guess of the vertex, but we'll get into that in a moment. So uh, we're going to, you'll see the 125 quarters come here in a moment. So now I'm going to do the factoring here. So since there's a t squared here, what do you square to make t squared? Well, this has to be a t. And what goes in here, remember um, a few different ways you can find this. It's half of this. It's also what we squared here. It's a negative 3 halves. Okay. It's also the square root of 9 quarters, but the problem with doing the square root of 9 quarters, you have to make sure you look here to get the right sign, because there's two square roots of 9 quarters, 3 halves and negative 3 halves. We need the negative 3 halves here. And so, and, and there's the 125 quarters that we just found here. 
So this is now in vertex form. So the vertex would be at th at uh, 3 halves, 125 quarters. Remember, remember the x minus p in the formula? So if it's t minus 3 halves, then 3 halves is the, uh, in this, and we wouldn't call it the x coordinate here. It's actually the t coordinate because the variables are t and h, not x and y. So 3 halves, remember, that's the time, and the height is the 125 quarters. So the maximum height is the 125 quarters, but as I was talking about a moment ago, if somebody asked you, well, what's the maximum height of the uh, of the rock, and you said 125 quarters meters, they would probably look at you kind of strange. So it's better to write that as a decimal and say it's 31.25 meters. Uh, and again, uh, we would just get that by taking our calculator and dividing 125 by 4. So there's the 31.25 the meters. In, uh, in B, you're asked, how long does it take for the rock to reach its maximum height? Well, see, the T coordinate is 3 halves. See, that's the time that this height occurs at. So 3 halves, or 3 half seconds, or 1.5 seconds, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. That's the time that the maximum height occurs. That's the time it occurs at, that's the actual height. And uh, in, in C here at the end, it says, how high is the building? We don't need the vertex form to answer C, although we could use the vertex form to still answer this. The uh, height, see, the rock was at the height of the building the uh, moment before it was thrown. And the moment, or as it's thrown, uh, the moment as it's thrown would be the beginning, and we would find that by putting in our formula uh, zero in place of the time because at time zero it's not quite yet been thrown and so it's at the top of the building. Now this is zero and this is zero so zero plus zero plus twenty is just twenty. So the uh, so the building is twenty meters high. And that's the end of the tutorial.